So before we move on to discussing the technology, the process technology and the manufacturing of uh, FinFit and TriGate transistors, I wanted to you know, give you a brief motivation of why there is a need for uh, TriGate or FinFit or uh, fully depleted SOI kind of devices, you know, why, what's the need for moving from a planner to this architecture. So this schematic over here, it shows you a conventional planar transistor where the source, the channel, and the drain are in the same plane. And uh, drawn here is uh, the band diagram showing the conduction and the valence band uh, of a long channel uh, transistor device, assuming it's an N MOSFET device, so it's N source drain, region and a p channel so this would be the end source and the drain and this would be the channel region so this is uh, you know showing the band diagram so for electrons presence in the source region they essentially see a barrier uh, for going to the drain and when you apply a gate field you essentially you know as you keep on applying a gate field you move and you know you negate this barrier and then electrons can now flow from your source and drain. So this is how it manifests itself in the IDVG characteristics of the transistor. So plotted here is essentially the drain current in a log scale as a function of the gate voltage. So what you see is essentially as you as you apply a gate field or a gate voltage and lower this uh, barrier for electrons to flow from the source to the drain what you essentially see is an exponential increase in your uh, drain current as your function of your gate voltage so two things to uh, point out here is essentially the slope of this exponential increase which is also known as the subthreshold slope or denoted by SS and another thing to point out is the voltage at which you see you start seeing this exponential increase so that is uh, also known as a threshold voltage uh, or the VT note that this is a very simple definition of VT there are more mathematical definitions of VT for but just for the sake of simplicity uh, let's just define VT at looking at this curve the point at which we start to see this exponential increase in our drain current so what happens uh, in a in a conventional long channel transistor when you go from a say a drain voltage of a 10 millivolt to a, a drain voltage of 1 volt so say you increase your drain voltage by 100x so in a long channel transistor what that translates into you see a 100x increase in your uh, drain current in your off state you also see a same 100x improvement in your drain current in your on state so what you essentially observe in a long channel device is that you observe the same increase in your uh, current in the off and the on state and your subthreshold slope also going from 10 millivolt to 1 volt it does not change so say the subthreshold slope here was 90 millivolt per decade so you see the same subthreshold slope when you go from a lower drain voltage to a higher drain voltage and uh, your threshold voltage you know your threshold voltage say you had a threshold voltage of point 0.1 at uh, 10 millivolts so you see the same threshold voltage at when you have a drain voltage of 1 volt so three things are happening your sub threshold slope remains the same your VT remains the same and you see a similar increase in your on current and your off current in a long channel device so another way to state that is from looking at this uh, energy band diagram for a long channel device whether you apply a drain voltage a small drain voltage of 10 millivolt versus if you apply 
a large drain voltage say of 1 volt you are not modulating this barrier which essentially determines your current flow from your source to your drain so your drain voltage is not modulating this barrier for electron flow from the source to the drain so now let's look at what happens when you have a short channel device say you have a device which has a gate length of 30 nanometers which is typical of you know today's technology so it's a short channel device and plotted here is a band diagram uh, the conduction band and the valence band so this is plotted at a low drain voltage of 10 millivolts and this is at a high drain voltage of 1 volt so what do you see it at low drain voltage things look normal as you uh, apply a gate field you see a decrease in this barrier and again as you your flow of your electrons from your source to your drain is still uh, controlled by this barrier which is in effect controlled by the gate field or the gate voltage and you see a similar exponential increase in your uh, drain current starting at the threshold voltage and you see a similar sub-threshold slope of uh, let's say 90 millivolts per decade but now look what happens if you apply a high drain voltage so since your drain is now very close it's only 30 nanometer away from your source what you see is now applying a high uh, voltage on your drain you tend this drain voltage tends to affect this potential barrier which exists for electrons to flow from the source to the drain so what you see is the lowering of this barrier so what you see is essentially the drain voltage or the drain is inducing a lowering of this barrier so which is also known as you know drain induced barrier lowering or the acronym for this is DIBL so what you essentially see is that now the barrier for the carriers to flow from the source to drain is being affected not by just the gate field but it's also being starting to getting affected by this application of this drain voltage so how does it manifest this thing manifest on the IV characteristic so what you see is now when you apply a high drain voltage say you apply a drain voltage of 1 volt so there's a 100x increase in your drain voltage so what you see is a similar 100x improvement in your drain current but you see a much larger increase in your off state so in your off current you see a much larger increase why this is happening is because now even though you are not applying any gate voltage you are reducing this barrier for electrons to go from your source to the drain because of applying this high drain voltage so this high drain voltage is essentially reducing this barrier and so you're getting a much larger increase in your off current another way this can be demonstrated is you are essentially also in this graph seeing that your threshold voltage which was now initially say 0.1 volt now it has shifted and let's say in this case it's minus 0.1 so there's a 200 millivolt shift in your threshold voltage on the application of 1 volt of drain voltage so your drain application of 1 volt of drain voltage has uh, reduced your barrier which it manifests itself as a shift in your VT so you know one measure of this dibble is your shift in your VT as you apply a drain voltage another thing you notice here is now your sub threshold swing is degraded so initially you needed 90 millivolt to increase your uh, on current by one decade now your sub threshold swing has correspondingly degraded let's say 120 millivolt per decade so there are you know there are three things which you know we can call as short channel effect so what you see is in a short channel planar device 
you see a shift in your threshold voltage which is also you know you can quantify it as devil you see your sub threshold slope degrade so in this case it's changing from you know 90 millivolts per decade to 120 millivolts per decade and also you see a much larger increase in your off current so you see an i off increase so you know these three things are you know what is commonly quantified as a short channel effects so what you see is uh, increase in your uh, threshold uh, decrease in your threshold voltage so you know 200 millivolt for application of one volt of drain voltage you see a degradation in your sub threshold slope and you see a corresponding increase in your off current 